going to look to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 uh, this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning with verse 7. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says, But when we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not us, we are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, and the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, and that the life of Jesus may be manifest in our mortal flesh, so that death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe and therefore I speak, we also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. Let's go ahead and go to our Lord. Father, as we come in the name of Christ, we just ask that you lead us and guide us. Lord, be able to take this and apply it to our lives this morning. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Have you ever been distressed? Have you ever felt that the whole world was against you? Uh, have you ever felt like singing that song, Nobody Loves Me, Everybody Hates Me, I'm going to go out and eat worms? Uh, <laughs> Paul is a, addressing that particular aspect. Some of you are looking at me kind of funny. Maybe I'll have to explain that song later. I'll look it up on YouTube. Says we have a treasure. We have a treasure. What is this treasure that, that Paul is talking about? The treasure that, that lives within us. And, and I, I look at this treasure for a moment, and we sang some about it uh, this morning. We have Jesus Christ. He dwells within us. I love the last song we sang, but I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded that he is able. And, you know, he's quoting that right out of the Bible. I love that song. I love what he says. We have a treasure within us. And that treasure is not going to go away. That treasure is not going to disappear. What is the treasure we have? It's Jesus Christ. It's, it's him. It's our salvation that we have. I love where he says that he will never leave us nor forsake us, but he's always there. I love the idea that he has that relationship with us. I love what he talks about here. We have this treasure. And then I think about what he says in Psalms uh, 8 where he says, What is man? What is man that thou art mindful of him? For the son of man. This treasure that we have, we have in this earthen vessel. And, and as I look at what Paul is writing about here, we're not worthy of this treasure. How many of us deserve Jesus Christ? How many of us deserve salvation? How many of us deserve a home in heaven with God? But he has given to us that treasure in this earthen vessel. And I look at it and think, what are we? That God is even mindful of us. That he has simply said, here is this great treasure that you can have. Uh, it's amazing to me that as I look at this verse that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. The excellency of the power of God may, the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. I'll get that right in a minute. Anything we are. I think we have, as we look forward to things, where does it come from? It doesn't come from us. Uh, like as Paul writes earlier in Corinthians, he says, God shows the foolishness of preaching. And I think about that every now and then. That's what he chose. Elijah. How powerful was Elijah. How great was Elijah in his own power. But when he depended upon the power of God, how great was he. And I could mention a lot of other 
Old Testament prophets. I, I, I love the story where they're going out to, to get an army together. And as she's getting that army together, God wants to get it smaller and smaller and smaller. And, and I can picture this one scene that you asked if any of us are visualized. And I always visualize this scene where he gets up in front of the army and he says, if any of you are fearful, go home. And I can picture the swords and shields dropping in this dust cloud as they're all running out, going home, saying, no. he said, we can go, I'm out of here. And how many did he end up with going against the Philistines? 300. He went to the brook and he divided them and he had a large army and a small army and God said, send the large ones home. The power of God is in us. And that's the same power today, tomorrow, the next day. It's not going to change. You see, when God dwells within us, what can defeat us? So Paul then states this, and this is where, it, where it, we go back to that treasure for a moment. We're hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. As you look at these things that are going on, why can we say we are going through and being hard pressed and we are being perplexed and we are being persecuted but not destroyed? Because it's not us that's doing it. It's that treasure that is within us that is giving us the strength to do it. It's that treasure that we have in this earthen vessel where God says, I can take care of you and I can help you. And as long as we focus on Christ, we're going to be okay. I like what, <coughs> excuse me, what he writes in Hebrews where he says this, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Where was he looking? He was looking to Jesus Christ. Not to the things around him, but he was looking to Christ. Peter. I like Peter, and Peter is the only one who did this, by the way, other than Jesus Christ. Peter had the faith to get out of the boat. Peter had the faith to walk on that water as he looked at Jesus Christ. And as long as he was following Christ, everything was fine. And I have no idea how long Peter was out there. And I know I hear people criticize Peter saying, oh, he took his eyes off of Christ. But I want you to know he's the only one who got out of the boat in the first place. <laughs> He got out of the boat. His eyes were on Jesus Christ. And as long as his eyes were on Jesus Christ, <coughs> he was walking on that water. As long as our eyes are on Christ, what difference does it make what happens in this world? As long as our eyes are on Jesus Christ, what difference does it make what people say or what people do? Because he's the one that's in control. Peter, as he took his eyes off of Christ and he looked at the waves around him and as he looked at the storm around him, what happened to Peter? He sank. He sank, yes. But he had the presence of mind to turn to Jesus Christ, not to the eleven in the boat, and say, Lord, help me. And he walked on the water again as they both went back to the boat. The treasure that is within us is more important than anything in this world. The treasure that is within us can help us to get through anything that is in this world. Abraham looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. I'm not home yet. I have a home in heaven with Jesus Christ. 
And no matter what happens here, I have that relationship with him, and I can look, up, look forward to that time <coughs> when I will see him. I love what he says. Look at what he says there. Hard pressed on every side, yet we're not crushed. It's not us that holds the pressure out. Who holds it out? God. The treasure that is within us holds it out. I like what he says, persecuted, but not forsaken. Is God ever going to leave us? No. You know, oh, you're going through a hard time. I'll, I'll catch up with you when you get through the other side. Is that something that God said? No, he says he's not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. I like that. He doesn't tell us. You're never going to have fun. That's not what he says. But he says, as you look through those problems, he right there. That treasure that we have in this earthen vessel, it's not going to get destroyed. It's not going to get taken away. It's not going to get crushed. And we won't either as long as we turn to him and look toward him. Uh, for the things that are going on in our life. I like as he goes on into verse 10. I'm always caring about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus. The life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. And the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So the death is working in us, but life in you. Just as you look at those verses, what is working in us? The life of Jesus Christ. We're not who we were. Think about that for a moment. God changed us. And you who were dead in trespasses and sin. Ephesians. I'm quickened. Made alive. God changed us. We're not who we were. And this, I've said this before, people get a little upset about this, but it's okay, it's true. Before you came to Christ, you were a child of Satan. You were dead. That's what he tells us. That's what he told the Pharisees, didn't he? You are of your father the devil, and his lust you're going to do. Why were they the father the devil? Because they were following him. They were not following Christ. But I'm a child of the king now. And if you've accepted Christ, you're a child of that king also. <coughs> and that treasure has changed us and made us new. But God doesn't just leave us there, does he? No. We are continually growing in Sometimes we back step and we uh, get our eyes off of Christ and we get our eyes on other things and we forget about the treasure that we have within us. But God's always there. Mm -hmm. We simply need to turn back to Him. I like as he, he talks about this, caring about in the body the dying of Christ, the life of Christ may be manifest in our body. I want people to see Jesus Christ. I want people to see him for who he is. And I like that as he talks about this, for we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. Paul put it this way. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, the life that I now live, I live by faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. My life is not mine, it belongs to God. And I want people to see the treasure that is within me. I want people to see that heavenly treasure that is in this earthly body. Because of how great and how wonderful and how important he is. Verse 13. <coughs> Excuse me. 
who have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believe, therefore I speak. We also believe and therefore speak. Let's just stop there for a moment. I believe, therefore I speak. I want to ask you some simple questions here. As, as, as you believe in something, and as, as you have that as part of your life, can you hide it from everybody? People will know you by what you say and by what you do and by how you are. You can't really hide that from everybody for very long anyway. As you think about what he is saying here, do you believe that you have an earthly, a heavenly treasure, Jesus Christ, inside this earthly vessel? Do you believe that you have that treasure that you can turn to whenever there is a problem, whenever there is a persecution, whenever there is all these things that he lists? Do you believe that you can turn to Christ and seek his help and seek his comfort and seek his leadership? Do you believe that that treasure that is within you makes a difference? If that treasure doesn't make a difference, I'm going to say you may not have the treasure. <laughs> if that treasure in your life uh, uh, is, is not Jesus Christ, then you need a different treasure. Uh, let's just put it that way. Uh, as he talks about this, I believe, I believe I have Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe that that treasure resides within me. I believe that I am going to see him face to face. Therefore, I speak. Therefore, I tell people about it. Therefore, it is shared with those around us. I, I like what he, Paul is writing here. He is saying, I am sharing with you about that treasure that I have. It's not an earthly treasure. It's not a bank account. It's not gold. It's not silver. It's not stocks or bonds. Because all those treasures, guess what happens to them? They can go away. <coughs> and when you die, whose are they? Yeah, who knows? But I'll put it this way. I won't care. That's right. Who cares? But I have a heavenly treasure. And that heavenly treasure is Jesus Christ. He lives within me. Can that treasure be overspent? Can I get a notice from heaven that says, sorry, your bank account is overdrawn? <laughs> if I share this treasure with someone, do I lose anything? No. Again. This treasure that Paul is writing about, he says, I have it within this earthly vessel. I have it here. I, be I believe I have it. Therefore, I speak. I I therefore, I let others know about this treasure because I want them to have the same treasure that I have. I like what he says as he goes on into verse 14. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus. And just stop me at that point for, for a moment. This is part of the treasure, isn't it? This is part of what we have in this earthly vessel. I love as he talks about this in 1 Corinthians 15, where he says this in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the last trump, we shall be changed. We all shall be changed. Put on immortality. Corruptible, incorruption. This is part of the treasure that he has. I asked mom this past week, where do you want to be when Christ comes? And she gave me a nice answer and all that. So I gave her my answer and she just kind of laughed at me. 
my answer has always been I want to be at the funeral of a Christian. Because again, in Christ, get the rise first, and I get to see that. And it's going to stop the funeral. But that's coming. And that is part of the treasure we have in this earthen vessel. We are going to see Jesus Christ. Moses couldn't. Moses wanted to see the face of God, and he couldn't. No one can look at the face of God and live. But we will. Because we're going to be changed and made different. I love, as I look at this, this passage, we have a treasure in this earthen vessel that God has simply said, here it is. I don't deserve it. I didn't earn it. I didn't, uh, there's no way that I can say it's, it's something I did or something of that nature. God simply said, here's that treasure. And as long as I focus on Jesus Christ, what do I have to worry about? Me to live is Christ. To die is gain. How great that's going to be. But I love what he says. I believe. I have this treasure. Therefore, I share it with the world around me. And I lose nothing but gain. You have Christ, you have that treasure within you. What are you going to do with that treasure? Let's go ahead and get started. My Father is kept in the name of Christ. I just that you help us to see the treasure that we do have. In you. And Lord, how great that is. Lord, this morning we just pray that if there's any who would say, I need to refocus on that treasure, I need, need Jesus Christ, whatever it might be, that today would be that. And we thank you. Thank you for that treasure. We ask in your name. As we stand, as we sing, if there's any decision you need to make, we invite you to make. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white.
So we'll be uh, moving it over there on October the 2nd. Uh, and other than that, I do not think we have any other announcements. Okay. This coming once a Okay. So I'll make sure that's that's known. Okay, any other announcements this morning? Uh, I have a cherry tree over at the house that it looked like it was dead most of the summer. And I've been trying to revive it and trying to get it to bring some leaves back to it. I decided this week was a good week to bloom. <laughs> now, I understand all the science behind why it's doing that and all this other kind of stuff. But if that cherry tree can come back and have life, because it gets water, the water of life, all we need is the water of life in our hearts. And that will bring us to Christ also. I'm not sure I'm going to get any cherries on, but, but it's in blue. We're going to stay at a closing song, and then, uh, Mike, I'm going to ask after that song if you would pass for the blessing of the group. Do you record